To start the day, I'll hand it over to the amazing Michelle Zappa, founder and CEO of Envisioning, who will be having a conversation on how Envisioning approaches emerging technology towards sustainable development. Over to you, Michelle. Thank you, Sunil, for the warm introduction. I wish I could be with you guys in at King's Cross, but here we are online. Um, I'm live in Sao Paulo, where it's still where the sun still isn't really up. And with me is Insa Ilgen uh, from GIZ and Arthur Suarez. They'll introduce themselves briefly to the um, session. So, hi, I'm Arthur Suarez. I'm the head of product and one of the partners of Envisioning. Um, and I've been quite involved uh, with the Tech Detector project that we're going to discuss today. I'm from a very sunny and warm Berlin, which is quite unusual. So very happy to be here and see you all. Yes, hi, I'm Insa Ilgen. Um, I'm based in Frankfurt, actually, also very sunny, very warm today. Um, I'm part of German development corporation GIZ, and I'm the current project director on the sector project for sustainable mobility, but I was former head of the um, GIZ tech detector and part of the development of this amazing tool. So excited to discuss this with you today. Thank you, Insa. So Arthur and Insa were heavily involved in developing uh, what we're going to show uh, to you today. And before diving into the actual platform, I'm going to talk uh, to you at a high level of, about what envisioning is and why we care so much about technology. And uh, I'll kick things off with this image, which uh, I hope, which uh, sets the tone for me at least. This is uh, these are a series of drones flying over the Bund. Uh, in Shanghai a couple of months ago, producing a QR code in the air. And this is meant to uh, make us realize that technology uh, arguably isn't always a solution to problems, but rather it introduces a whole host of new questions that we ask ourselves about, uh, especially regarding whether the technology even is something that we want. And um, with this in mind, um, and the, a series of other examples, of course, of, of how technology is, is unfolding, um, is is the reason we're here because technology affects uh, so much uh, around us and having a critical eye about it and having sort of an informed view of how it's actually uh, uh, developing we believe that's crucial uh, so envision is an emerging technology research institute we try making sense of technologies as they progress over time and we find ourselves uh, we try finding ourselves in sort of in the intersection of the uh, academic private and public sectors in following technology and explaining it to the public we're fully global, remote uh, since day one, and um, we have this particular view of what technology actually is. Um, and um, there are many ways of framing the de or defining technology. Uh, Alan Kay probably says it best, technology is everything invented after we're born. So if it seems new, it's technological. And um, technology progresses in a certain direction. It advances over time, uh, and it, it, it keeps this visible history of, of, of where it's uh, of how it ended up where it is right now. Uh, technology changes our expectations. We used to uh, hunt when we were hungry, now we tap. So it affects the way we perceive the world. And uh, we, we, we tend to think about technology in terms of, their art, in terms of its artifacts, um, and we, we forget to see the systems as a whole um, for what they are. And uh, all of these uh, aspects uh, of our developed world are technological in nature. So not just um, the, the not just currency, but the fact that we can store value in an object uh, through money uh, is technological. Not just the pencil and the paper, but the concept of writing, um, the concept of, uh, of of reshaping the surface of our planet through agriculture. All of these are technologies, and all of these change to some extent uh, over time. And it's exactly in this space that we're trying to track and make sense of where it's going and why that's happening. You could say that everything we create is technological, everything we make, everything we build that isn't of the natural world is uh, inherently technological. And uh, due to Moore's law and other exponential changes, you could also say that things get faster, faster, and things get cheaper, faster. And because of this, um, we are so uh, tremendously interested in keeping track of it and, and helping out in making sense of where it's going and especially bringing in a measured uh, eye to technological development and being less caught up in the hype. And technology has this strong correlation between uh, imagination and uh, an innovation of what actually happens. So we have uh, countless examples, uh, this one from Black Mirror, uh, but we have countless examples of what science fiction uh, turns into science fact over time. Um, 
this one from Ready Player One with haptic gloves. So over and over and over, we keep seeing science fiction becoming science fact over time. And one of the ways that we measure that um, is through something called TRL or technology readiness level, which is an open standard used by aerospace and other um, industries where technology progresses um, numerically from a one all the way up to a nine. And when it's, when it's a low number, uh, it climbs up from being a concept, a proof of concept that validates, becomes a prototype, and then finally becomes a product. This doesn't mean that every concept becomes a product, but it means that every product began as an idea or a concept. And, prog and tracking these, uh, this progress over time is crucial to us because oftentimes it feels like, or oftentimes it's difficult to discern whether any given technology is science fiction or uh, whether, it's whether it's actually happening. And we've, uh, we try going through great lengths to actually tracking those, triangulating where it's at uh, and communicating it. And at any given moment, uh, we'll have technologies uh, across all levels of development. So currently at TRL1, we have things like the Dyson Swarm, which is very much science fiction um, covering uh, the planet or the sun uh, with solar panels. It might take a while, um, but it's an idea and it's been fleshed out in idea space. And at, my, at some point it might become reality. Uh, whereas things like temperature tracking systems, which um, were uh, not as widespread uh, a year or two ago as they are now, quickly went from sort of mid-level TRL to high TRL um, due to uh, global needs. So at any moment, technology, we have a spread of technologies across all levels of TRL. And this is a crucial element of what we'll be showing you because much of our um, tracking revolves around uh, finding these metrics and finding these uh, the numbers behind the story um, to not get caught up in the hype of technology. And uh, we're going to spend uh, the rest of the session talking about Tech Detector, which is a platform for looking at technologies around sustainable development, which again, Arthur and Insa led a charge in developing over this last year. And um, we're going to play a brief video. These are some highlights of the session of, of the platform. We're going to play a brief video that explains um, the platform at a high level. And then, then we're going to do uh, an in-depth uh, screen share and explanation of how it came together. So if you could please play the video. Technological innovation and digitalization enable comprehensive and transformative change. In order to achieve the sustainable development goals, harnessing the potential of innovative technologies will be crucial. Innovation cycles are shortening and the complexity of technology innovations is increasing tremendously. In order to utilize the growing potential of innovative technologies for sustainable development, a comprehensive systematic analysis of their technological maturity and their potential sustainability impact is essential. Technology innovations can be key factors for social, economic and organizational change worldwide. To support the effective and strategic use of emerging technologies for sustainable development, GIZ has created the first technology radar focusing on the potential of innovative technologies for sustainable development. GIZ's Tech Detector provides a comprehensive analysis of the sustainability impact and readiness level of 100 carefully selected technologies which have been extensively analyzed using NASA's TRL methodology. Each technology is represented by a circle in the radar. Its appearance and positioning provide a wealth of information at a glance. Technologies can be filtered by readiness level or easily identified by their positioning as one of four readiness categories. Technologies can also be filtered by sustainability impact, which is visible through the shade around a technology's circle icon. The larger the shade, the higher the impact. Sustainability impact is based on crowdsourced metrics covering all three sustainability dimensions as well as cross-cutting areas. Users can target specific and relevant technologies in the filter section. For instance, if you work in social development and you want to understand what technologies are impactful in your field, simply highlight your sector and it will only show relevant technologies indicated by yellow circles here. The order function sorts the radar, for instance, by impact, from least to most impactful. Finally, selecting a technology reveals a comprehensive analysis.
tech detector bridges the gap between the development community and the tech industry and acts as a crucial catalyst for reaching the sustainable development goals. Find out more and test the tech detector at techdetector.giz.de. So to emphasize, this is freely available uh, on techdetector.de or techdetector.giz.de. Uh, every all of this work is uh, done for the public um, and uh, and freely available. And uh, with no further ado, um, Arthur, you want to pull up a screen share and want to talk through uh, what the platform looks like, and we're gonna then we'll yes, so over to you. Sure. Um, so hi everyone again. Um, I'm very happy also to show a bit of the difference in the development that we had from the video that we've just shown to the product that we're showcasing right now. Uh, there's been a big evolution in the way that we're framing the project and the way that we're presenting the research. So the tech detector um, has as a very good uh, goal to keep monitoring the impact of emerging technologies on sustainable development. And the way we're doing this is by presenting a continuous research that is linking different contexts and different challenges with the impacts and technologies that are being applicable to that situation. The way you can navigate on the project, you can look, um, we present through each, uh, when you open the landing page, you can see the different objects that we have that are organized in two main uh, bulk objects that are stories that are telling these narratives, that are telling the way and contextualizing contextualizing the technologies, but we also have different types of technology objects that are the domains. So you can see this as big topics of technologies that are encompassing different applications and different methods. And it serves as a very good intro for you that are not so aware of the, the context of a given technology or doesn't have so much of an expertise. This is a very good leeway to get yourself started with this. We provide a quite comprehensive description, give you a bit of a context of what's happening in the, um, with this given technology. We're citing the different methods that are available to this, but also showcasing different type of technological applications that are available, giving quite a comprehensive bibliography that you can look and research a bit more, but also connecting this to different content in the, in the platform. So when we look about ad, uh, additive manufacturing, we can look, for instance, and see a story about industrial 3D printing or a portable factory that are categorized in different ways. Um, the great thing about the tech detector and what's something that we're very happy about it is that there is a layer of consuming the content, but this is heavily backed through data um, and data visualization in that sense. So together with the platform where you're consuming these things, uh, what you, that we've shown in the um, in the video as well, we have a data visualization tool that you can find and navigate through all, all over this content um, and categorize in many different ways to find the information that you're looking for. So in this case, we can look at the different metrics that we explained, the sustainability impact and gender impact that we're going to be a bit, go probably discuss a bit in a second, the technology readiness level. We can also look and filter this given applications through the different topics that they are connected to. So biological diversity, digital economy, or so forth. Uh, we can also filter them by different industries or different sustainable development goals, such as gender equality or quality education. And from them on, you can start to navigate and filter with this view to kind of get the better insight on the technologies that you want to search and gather more information on. So whenever you open a technology, you'll be able to see a su short summary of them. You'll be able to see the different metrics. So the technology readiness level, the sustainability impact, and the breakdown of the different vectors that we analyze, the gender impact, if this has been accessed as well, but the different domains and the different stories that are connecting to this. So it's a very all encompassing that you can really spend a lot of time gathering knowledge uh, and understanding a bit more about the implications that the technologies can have with the focus on sustainable development. Um, and once again, as Michelle mentioned, this is a completely open platform. Um, you can just 
go to tech.de right now and then just browse this as you will as well. Um, I'd love yes. to hear from Insa a little bit around the, uh, the challenges that you guys face as a public institution in tracking this and perhaps how you thought that uh, working with this kind of platform approach would help that. So if you want to speak to that a little bit, it sounds. Yes, happy to do so. Um, I think for us, like to, to understand a little bit, like from, from where we are coming from as GIZ, um, we are like in general a service provider in the field of International Cooperation for Sustainable Development. Um, and we are like in general dedicated to shaping a future worth living around the world. So this is kind of like how we work in our daily, in our daily work, like on the ground with our partners. Um, but at the same time, we see that there's like an increasing amount of like um, emerging tech, which might have like a very positive impact on our work and on the ground. So we felt that it's maybe better to, to focus on developing um, a guiding tool and a very analytical assessment instead of just focusing like on one technological hype. Because this is what we see like in, in, in many other institutions that sometimes it's very it's very nice to just follow like the newspaper's headline regarding, oh, there's like one blockchain approach. Can we not just do something with it? And even though we are like experts on sustainable development, we are like by no means like a tech company. So I felt like to, to, to go into this cooperation with, with you guys from Envisioning, it was for us very interesting to understand like how do you actually like assess um, how technologies evolve and also for us to kind of like reframe at what point does it actually make sense for large institutions like ours and working in very sensitive con contexts so like we are what we are doing really like um, has like an impact on, on, on our on people on the ground so we cannot do like a very quick shot on something so that's that's by no means something we can or want to do so for us it was really critical to to build literacy and knowledge around like technologies will evolve and something that's maybe in a very early stage maybe we just have to create knowledge around it without just like implementing it so i felt for us it was it was actually like a very different approach, like not going right into implementation with one specific technology, but instead like building like a broader assessment on what impact my technology have. And not only in regards of like their maturity level, but especially on sustainable development, which has like different dimensions. And it's not only economic, it is also social, it's ecological. And for us, we are very proud like on that we develop with you guys the gender metrics because that is very, very um, impactful actually for, for our target groups. Nice. And so, I mean, I know it's early in the process, but uh, when we talk about the global um, community around sustainable development, um, what kind of uh, leverage or support uh, do you feel you're looking for? Because I, I recall one of the objectives was also to help instill this type of thinking beyond GIZ. And uh, that's one of the reasons we make it so public in English uh, as well. Do you wanna to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, I think in general, I think there should, like what we also said in the video, like bridging the gap between like the international development community and the tech community. And I think there are definitely like linkages, but sometimes with just only very large players or only like in regards to like a startup community which is more in direction of like job creations on the ground rather than let's use the, the solutions they develop. So I think we should have like a closer cooperation because when I look into the future of development cooperation, this will have like a very tremendous impact on how we actually deliver our solutions. So this is like, I really believe in the, in the potential of emerging technologies for sustainable development. And we cannot do this like on our own. Like I think, we as like the international development community have to build like a very strong network of service providers, but also like on, on, on tech providers. And we have to create like technical literacy on this. Thank you. And I'm gonna if, if pose I a question add, to Arthur. Yeah, go ahead. If yeah, I please. Add to that, I think one of the 
main objectives of the approach that we're trying to promote with envisioning <clears throat> is to reduce a bit of despolarization on the topic of emerging technologies um, in the sense that we are either putting it into this very utopian, techno-optimistic place or on the opposite side in a very dystopian situation. But in both ways, this is really distancing ourselves from the continent itself and then looking at technologies in a very pragmatic way. I would also say that agreeing and, and, and very happy with the result that we have accomplished with the sustainability impact metric, but also the gender impact metric in the sense that we are offering a different frame of analysis for technologies, or at least another way of contemplating how technologies can be applicable in a general sense. Because we could see that most of the um, analysis or a, a big part of the discourse that's been happening with technology has been quite centered on the economic impact or the disruption in industries, what can it do and how it can create or things in that way. But there are very many different ways as well of looking at emerging technologies. And the tech detector is a, it's a very heavily centered on the sustainability approach. If we look at the 2030 agenda and the way that we are framing the technologies, all the categorizations are connected to the sustainable development goals. And this has been in the core of like looking at technologies to be a very good tool, not putting this in a pedestal or like demonizing it in a way if you can make this comparison, but like really looking at the possible implications. Um, and I think this is what we've been trying to materialize both in the stories and the narratives that we're creating, where we're looking ahead, um, not putting just a very stereotypical approach to a given technology, but also the type of dynamics that we are approaching in our workshops and interactions that we have, where we really try to extrapolate um, how this given technology can be used in a given context to a given uh, persona or a given situation and really exercise the possible positive or maybe the negative implications and what can we do uh, to the goal that we want to accomplish. And just to, to add on this, I think um, it is very important to understand that there are like no easy answers. Like there's not like a buy button under any of the technologies that we um, showcase on the tech detector saying like, oh, you just buy this like for your uh, local project in wherever rural Africa. Like this is not how this works. So we will never have like a tool that giving us like the full answers on like which technologies can be used because there's always like a local context. It's always like depending on like what's your local situation, like who are your partners, how's like the, um, the surrounding. So what's the digital infrastructure, like what kind of infrastructure do you need on the ground? So local assessment is something that of course we have not solved at this point. And like in my understanding, I think we will never have like an automatic solution on, oh, you can use this technology in this specific for this specific questionnaire, because there will always be like a local context where we need like expert knowledge on the ground, giving like an assessment on this is working in this context at this specific time. So I think this was something that we also like realized when we started the project that there were like very high hopes, but like, oh, this is really easy. So you type in like your 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 problem you're facing and you have like a matchmaking with like, oh, we just use this technology. So this is like not what we're doing. It's really more um, actually like capacity development, creating like awareness and knowledge on emerging techs and it, and it also even like an understanding of like what's actually like a tech application in in contrast to like what's like a tech um overall area or field like i think sometimes this goes like very uh, going like fluently into each other so i think for us we realize that it's 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 not an easy solution it's not a quick um a quick shop that you use so yeah sorry there's someone ringing <laughs> Well, so one of the things I hear and one of the approaches we have is to avoid uh, so-called technological solutionism. Uh, solutionism, this this idea that any problem has a benign technological solution to it. And uh, of course, we realize that it's not, it's rarely the case. Uh, and oftentimes we're led to believe that technologies are solutions to all of our problems. And um, um, there is, I see a question around the decision-making um, 
for what should be added to the platform. So what kind of criteria we use to include technologies or to not include them. Um, Arthur, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, I can address this. I think it's um, there's a mixed pathway of decision um, in that sense that there is a, one, there's a general agenda of the editorial voice of the tech detector as looking into the whole of important and relevant topics for sustainable development. Uh, but we are also working closely with different teams inside of Gateset um, to serve for them as a tool to address the needs and the challenges that they're facing. And I think a good and important point uh, connecting to what you just mentioned with the, the tech, technology as just a solution, um, we really like to frame this in the sense of building a future literacy surrounded by technology or technological insights. In the sense that, as Inza was also mentioning, is not that you're going to have, well, now you can just purchase this technology from this company and then you can solve all your problems. This is completely unrealistic. Um, also, the assessments that we're having, they're serving as a good um, point of view um, to bridge and to engage discussions on those topics. Um, so I think this is a very good way of understanding. Most of the times, some of the engagements that we have come from a challenge that uh, the different teams are looking for more inspiration or they're looking to break a bit the mold from just looking from one vertical but looking cross-section uh, with different uh, industries or different sectors and I think this reflects a lot as well on the way we organize the content inside the tech detector um, there's a very it's um, it's very easy to jump from different disciplines and we're really not trying to keep technologies in a specific silo um, I think this is a good reflection of as well of the decision making process to how we add the technologies. Uh, at times they would be very specific, but we really try to show them as platforms for developing things in the future. To start wrapping things up, I want to hear from both of you what were some sources of inspiration behind this? Because I know we're doing things quite differently. I think what I what inspired us in the beginning was actually the the Gartner hype cycle, which we like used as like kind of like understanding like there is like a specific hype around emerging tech, and then it actually like drops again. So that was like terrifying also to 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 dive a little deeper into this. But this was just like the starting point, and we realized that when we looked at like any kind of like tech assessments, that it's strongly focusing like only on economic impacts. And that was really disturbing for us because we felt like we cannot like look into specific technologies without um, recognizing that there is like a potential negative impact in regards of like energy usage, which is critical for us, or accessibility and transparency, which which is also very critical for us. So this is when we started to see that we kind of like need to develop a sustainability metric that is like aligned with our understanding of what sustainable development is about and that it's not only like economic so i think that was like the starting point for us and i think we developed a much at least like more attractive and very very awesome i think tool that is like much more than just like a yeah, like a number of, of nice technologies listed. It's actually like a, develop, a capacity development tool. And I, I, I'm so excited also that we have like pulled this off because it's not that easy to work with a large organization as ours. Um, and for us, it's also sometimes not easy to work like with a very fast thinking uh, smaller organization. So I think we, we did quite well throughout the time to kind of like really had this vision that this is possible and that we really wanted to do this together. So I, I'm really excited that um, we we developed this and it's we are currently like really um, rolling it out like within our organization. It is, it is now becoming like part of our um, services within our organization for our projects on the ground. And that's like also like very awesome to see that this is really like now having like an impact on our portfolio in the country. So that's where we wanted to be at, at the beginning. So this is really great. And thanks to all of you actually too, that you have pushed through with us and put up with us at some points. It's a group effort. <laughs> Arthur? Yeah, I think um, adding to that, um, we are very happy as well to have a partner such a gate set. Um, 
in the sense that we are able to do this as a public utility, that is something that's open and available for everyone to use and to read and to access. Um, I think information and good information is such a powerful thing and I'm very happy to be able to be producing this and inspiring and enabling people to get more curious, to get more insights, to maybe challenge their thoughts about things, to learn something that maybe they will apply to it in the future. And I always carry just maybe two references in my in the back of my head when I'm approaching these two things, and I really like to uh, cite them as soon as I can, as much as I can. <laughs> Michelle knows already what's coming, but it's James Burke uh, Connections, which is a science historian that talks about the pathway and the connections of different technologies throughout time, and how at sometimes they are like completely disconnected from things, but eventually they will connect and to create to something much bigger. Um, I think that's quite a good reference uh, to the way that we're seeing these different connections between the paths that we're trying to link. And I would also say is Jokling, because I'm a sci-fi fan as well, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy as the don't panic. Uh, if we could have this giant universe of technologies that is a single source of truth, um, that's such a great accomplishment. <laughs> I think on that note, I grew up uh, with uh, Microsoft Encarta on CD-ROM, and I've always felt I felt so brilliant having a closed universe. And this was pre-web or around the time the web was coming it was coming uh, off the ground. But the idea of having on Encarta, the idea of having all the knowledge there is to have in a single place, and knowing that it's that it's bounded, um, I always felt like a huge sort of distinction. Uh, and it's something that we're I think also aspiring to doing here. So thank you so much. Uh, everyone uh, listening in, and uh, thanks, Insa. Thanks, Arthur, uh, for being here with us. Um, if you're, if you want to learn more about the platform, it's on techdetector.de. Uh, we're findable and reachable uh, in terms of um, if, if you want to contact us. So thank you so much.